Well, good day again, everybody. This is Joe. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, so uh, last video, we did a little repair job to the Canon Type Star 4, and that was because I was starting to use it due to the fact that my friend Gregory Short sent me a roll of EKG thermal paper. This paper, may, as measured by the official Antpat ruler from the 1930s, is eight and three sixteenths. This paper kind of resembles somewhat the Staples brand fax paper, except it's a little bit thicker. It's a higher quality paper. And of course it has this wonderful reddish colored grid pattern that really makes a nice pattern to type on top of. And then it makes a darker imprint than the Staples fax paper, which I really like. I opened this up on uh, yesterday's Sunday morning typewriter club meeting. And what the, the people in the, on the video chat didn't, probably didn't see is that as I was moving the typewriter around with this roll of paper, the roll of paper unfurled itself behind the typewriter, landed in my lap, and kind of got all wrinkled. So I have like about a foot or two of wrinkled paper here. But that brings to mind the fact that if you're going to use a roll of paper, it helps to have a holder of some kind for that roll. And this is not the first roll of paper I've used with typewriters, thermal or non-thermal. This is a holder that I made a couple years ago, scrap wood. This is like three-quarter inch wood, and then there's some eighth-inch plywood screwed together with countersunk screws. And I had some crazy idea of spray painting it, which was kind of a bad idea. But uh, essentially how it works is there is a brass, like a 3 8 inch brass tube. And it fits tightly in, this, in these holes on the side plates. And of course the paper just sits in here. This is actually a rather heavy duty thermal paper. This is like a brother brand roll of thermal paper, much heavier than the Staples brand. And so to remove the paper roll holder, you have to get the right size object and press the brass rod out of the other side. So it's kind of bulky. Well, of course, the roll of paper was kind of big also, but that is one example. This is not really that portable. It's kind of big, and it's, it would be kind of bulky to fit in a backpack or whatever. Okay, then I got uh, a little more fancy with it. So this one is made on a base of about quarter inch wood and there's some support pieces on both sides. There is a uh, seven eighths inch roughly or maybe three quarter inch dowel that fits fairly tightly on these side pieces so you can push the dowel out to remove the uh, roll of paper. And what I have here is a strip of rubber with a little lip and the idea is the back of a typewriter will kind of sit on this and keep it from moving. And this is non-thermal paper, so this is really intended for a regular mechanical typewriter. Then uh, I was using one of these wooden um, folding tray tables. And so this um, wooden dowel with these just these foam core discs that screw into the holes on the end of it. This is just the right height to fit inside the scissor leg. There's these folding scissor legs that the table folds up with. This just nestles itself in those scissor legs under the table and then you run the paper up behind the table and uh, into the typewriter. And then, uh, oh yeah, I've also been over the years typing on thinner or narrower rolls of paper. This is like adding machine paper, two and a quarter inch. This is good for poetry and haikus and things like that. And so, of course, I just made a smaller variation on the same idea. Very simple, quarter inch piece of craft wood, a thin sheet of rubber glued on the bottom so it doesn't slide around, a half inch thick piece of wood on either side here glued to the base, and then then I'm using a quarter inch uh, thick piece of, of uh, copper rod, maybe, and it just sits snugly in these holes here. And there is the paper, it runs on it, and then you just have to push the rod through with a tool to remove the paper and replace it. At one time envisioning you could be a, a typewriter poet and just do haikus, short little haikus, and then you would dispense them like a merchant would dispense 
your receipt, tear it off and give it to you. So it's almost like this idea of a, of a commercial exchange uh, with street poetry. Kind of crazy, but there it is. And then uh, more recently, I built this quite practical holder. This is made of discarded pieces of black foam core that's been gaffer taped together into just a little open-ended box that uh, sort of collapses itself into your backpack. Uh, the core of the idea though is I'm using a couple brass tubes. One snugly nestles against the other so you can pull the two apart take it out and replace the paper. And then the other innovative idea that I really like is I'm using one of these tear strips from a roll of aluminum foil or wax paper or plastic wrap. And that's a real cool idea that enables you to literally tear the paper off. And this is the Staples branded uh, inexpensive thin fax paper. But today we have to work with our new EKG paper and I'd like to kind of build a holder roughly on the same design as this one but made of discarded uh, cardboard from my recycle bin. Okay so I was looking through my recycle bin and my craft bin so first of all we're going to use some bamboo skewers uh, for the rod going through the holder instead of some fancy brass thing because this is the idea of this is to be very inexpensive and easy to make by just about anybody. I don't have an empty foil or plastic film dispenser from the kitchen so to get one of those tear strips. But I do have <laughs> this big disposable aluminum turkey pan and I have a pair of serrated scissors and I'm hoping that I can cut my own tear strip that'll function as a tear strip out of this thing here and these are only like 99 cents at the store and yes I did get my wife's permission to use it uh, with these scissors. Um, so the cardboard I was going through my recycle bin and I kind of like this really greasy cheesy pepperoni uh, <laughs> A uh, carton of this DiGiorno or whatever the heck brand of, yeah, of uh, bake it yourself pizza. So I thought this would be kind of a fun box to make our holder out of. And then a hot glue gun, which uh, might come in handy at one point, and uh, some gaffer's tape and maybe some glue or whatever. But uh, I did sit down a little bit this morning and kind of sketch out an idea. Okay, so I see a simple pattern cut out here of three sections that fold on the, these two inner folds, and they each have end tabs that fold. And so the three side, the two sides fold up to form a box, and then the three tabs on each side will fold together to form a three-layer end cap. Each one has a hole in it and those holes will theoretically line up and then you put the bamboo skewer through the middle and then we uh, hot glue our little serrated aluminum tear strip onto the inside of one edge here and hopefully that'll come together pretty easily as a uh, makeshift paper holder. So uh, referencing the authorized Patsy Van Cleave uh, ruler. The paper, as I said earlier, is about 8 and 3 sixteenths wide, so I'm thinking if we make a 9 inch wide box, that'll give us about 3 eighths of an inch roughly of clearance on either side. You could imagine it could be about 2 inches roughly. Looks like it's going to be 6 inches. So 9 inches this way. And then you need end tabs, and these need to be probably t two inches long and slightly tapered, I'm thinking. And then the hole is off-centered closer to the top. And then we'll put the tear strip along the inside if the tear strip ends up working, homemade tear strip. Nine inches wide for the main part of it, two inch tabs on either end that fold up, so it's a total of 13 inches by six inches this way. So I bought a pair of Cutco scissors back in the 1980s 
and they served me quite well for years. And then just well, maybe 2019 sometime, a friend of the family got into selling Cutco stuff and it turns out that my old scissors from the 1980s were under warranty, they're lifetime warrantied, and uh, they replaced them for free. So the $50 that I spent back in 1980 something for these really great serrated scissors has ended up being an investment that's kind of lasted me my whole adult life just about. I mean, that's kind of cool. Who would have thought heirloom scissors I could pass them on to my, my grandkids or something. Kind of silly, isn't it? Well, this is a pizza box holder. I don't know how strong this will be, but hopefully it'll be strong enough. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. Crust. Or no crust. <laughs> All right, so I need to mark the middle point of this. Well, I happen to have this little hole puncher that punches a roughly an eighth inch hole. And uh, it looks like it holds this skewer about perfectly. So what I'm thinking is when I fold this paper, like if I measured the holes ahead of time and then folded them, they may not all perfectly line up because of the way these three things have to overlap one behind the other. So I think I'm going to put a hole in the middle tab and then when we fold it we can mark the other two and then cut their holes. All right, so we will fold those up, fold those up, and then these and these. Okay, the pizza box holder. So it looks like our little hoopy dupe will be like that. I actually want to probably cut some of this off here because it kind of looks like it's a little too wide, maybe. It's kind of cool. If you're going to spend money on gaffer's tape, don't buy pretend gaffer's tape. Buy the real gaffer's tape. ProGaff. Not sponsored. I am not sponsored by ProGaff. I just use ProGaff. Okay. Looks like I need to trim this a little straighter. And also, it helps to use the other side. Let's see here. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, the idea is to stretch it, start on the inside where the fold is. And it's kind of pressure activated. So now, ideally, you probably want to put the gaffer's tape on the outside of the fold, not the inside, right? But that would mean you'd have black tape on the outside, and I want to keep this kind of packaging look to it. Okay, so now I'm going to have this hole, or this tab, I should say, on the inside. I need a fancy Sharpie pen. 
So what we're going to do is punch our next hole. that and then looking through both of those holes should reveal the other one behind it and yes it's all just approximate it's never exact so I'm going to try to hot glue the, the whole thing together let's see this middle one not glue the ends together, hopefully. So something like this. Uh, I don't like the way the middle comes out, but that's just a matter of creasing the packaging enough. Okay, the trick is I just want to glue a bunch of glue in there without actually gluing the stick. And that is pretty hot. That is the high temperature variety of glue stick. And let's just make sure the stick itself is okay. And then now we're going to now we're cooking with gas. And yes, yes, yes. It's pretty warm. All of a sudden the box is starting to gain some rigidity. That's pretty cool. Make sure my stick is not stuck. You don't want your stick stuck. I'll just wait for that glue to harden up. Here's what we're going to do. So let's try flattening out the fold with our metal straight edge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Here goes nothing or something or everything. So I'm going to try to cut to the inside of the marker pin marker pin mark which could just be abbreviated mark the inside of the mark let's say the inside of the pin mark the marker pin mark the mark of the marker pin mark okay this will use the middle part and we'll just mark here, here, here. Okay. The other thing I like about the high temperature hot glue guns is the glue stays melted long enough where you can run a really good sized bead before it starts to harden. You don't want it to harden up too soon, right? When you're trying to put the other one down. So this is where I'm going to try to get this adjusted to where these are even. Ouch. Did I tell you it's hot? Yeah, it's hot glue, Joe. Okay, the next question is, when you're dispensing the paper into the typewriter, how do you want to orient the paper relative to the tear strip? Well, it's going to fold forward this is the front side, so it has to fold forward into the machine, and you want the tear strip toward the machine side. So that's why you have to do it kind of like that. And then you poke the, the bamboo skewer, and the trick is always getting the other end through, but it shouldn't be too hard. Hey, look at that. Well, there you are. So let's see, does my tear strip work. So you do have to kind of hold the paper so it doesn't roll. And let's see. It works. Okay. I think that works good enough. All right. That's right. This is the last turkey baking pan you'll ever need to buy. In fact, this is the last time you'll ever bake a turkey with this self-draining 
pan. That's right, the self-draining pan. You know, I told my wife that, and she says, you've obviously never baked a turkey. Well, there you go, the greasy cheese pizza paper roll holder. For EKG thermal paper, this one is at least sized for that width. Uh, it's an easy project to make, obviously. The whole point of this is you need minimal tools and just some scrap, recycle, cardboard or whatever, some tape. You don't necessarily need the fancy gaffer's tape, but it helps, right? Hot glue gun, I recommend. I really recommend getting the uh, extra hot, hot glue gun so you can burn your knuckles and have blisters. That's what I like to do. And also, you might want to cut the sharp end off the stick so you don't accidentally, you know, poke yourself in the eye or whatever. But hey, it looks like it's going to work pretty good. You put it behind the typewriter, and you'll feed the paper in, of course, to the typewriter. But you want to give yourself some extra slack behind the typewriter. Uh, you know, obviously, this is for a thermal machine. The carriage doesn't physically move back and forth, so you don't really need that much slack. But I tend to put slack there just so, um, as I'm typing, if you forget about slack in the paper, then if the paper gets too tight, sometimes these thermal typewriters, the paper will start slipping to do uh, stream of consciousness writing with thermal typewriters. Uh, you know, it really gives you that ability to just write and write and write and never worry about running out of paper. Well, there you go, a little DIY greasy pizza, DiGiorno greasy pizza, thermal paper dispenser. This is Joe Van Cleve. Stay creative, stay well, have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.